Hello friends, it's wonderful to have you with me today. You'll notice that I'm doing this daily art video in a soft spoken voice. As a lot of you have requested this style, and I agree, I really like the soft speaking videos. So what I've de decided to do is do a soft-spoken, then a whispered, then a soft-spoken, then a whispered for the daily art videos. I haven't made up my mind yet if I'm going to be doing all soft-spoken for the more educational videos. I need your input. Let me know in the comments if you think or educational style video should be soft-spoken but anyway <laughs> so I thought I'd do soft-spoken whispered soft-spoken whispered in daily art so there's like a broad range um, for everybody to enjoy because I know whispering isn't everybody's cup of tea so we're moving on to another painting today this one is from March the 3rd, and you remember last time we looked at this painting which is called Pauli Gobillard in the Ball Dress. It wasn't one of my favourites. So, we're moving on to this painting here which is called Parnassus by Andrea Mantigana. Andrea. So, like always, we are going to take a screen grab and it takes such a long time to load because my internet, well, I should say 4G at the studio is shocking, but it gets there eventually. So let's take a screen grab off turn it on airplane mode so it doesn't interfere with my microphone and then we are going to open up our good notes app a new image and import the image and like always we are going to look at this painting and critique it and see what we can deduce. So, there is a lot going on in this painting. It seems to be a, like a medieval kind of, medieval, Mediterranean kind of um, landscape. We've got these kind of fruiting trees here trees, these fruits on them. It appears to be of the, I want to say either Roman, yeah I'm going to go with Roman period, time period. Wow, where do I start? So on the appearance, it seems like there's like a party happening. There's some people here who are, like, dancing. I'm not sure about this lady's eyes. <laughs> she looks like she's a little bit high. <laughs> Don't you agree? Her eyes are, like, going different directions. <laughs> anyway, everybody looks very happy or very drunk. <laughs> people down here are closed. There's a couple of people who aren't wearing anything like this guy, that person. Well, that person's got some sort of a robe on, but this guy is like saying, hey, what's going on? Oh, he's talking to this guy, right? This cherub kind of person here is like got something in his hand. Oh, it's, I think he's blowing it. And this guy is 
interacting with him for some reason, we don't know. I mean, the main focus is these guys really at the top here. We've got like a, I think it's like a Roman soldier, and I'm assuming she's some form of goddess, or really special kind of person. There's like a love chair behind them. And they're placed above everybody else on this kind of archway here, made of stone. We've got this chap here with a horse, which has a really lovely hair. Look at these girls. This horse has a beard and wings. So he's like a, I guess like a Pegasus winged horse. He's got like a little fluty thing in his hand. Some really awesome sandals. Oh, and this horse has some bling as well. Look at these jewels on this horse. Really cool. So a bejeweled Pegasus with a man here. I'm gonna say this is like maybe Hermes, possibly not a hundred percent. You know, the messenger god. We've got a chap over here that's Playing like a lute. A lute. He doesn't seem really happy about it. He looks like he's exhausted, like he's been playing for like 300 days or something. All these people just dance and dance and dance and dance and dance. So, that's my interpretation of this painting. But let's see what it really means. So, like I say, this is called Parnassus by Andrea Mantigina. Mantigina. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. So, it says, So many things are happening in this painting. I quite agree. In this Renaissance painting, we see the Roman gods gathered together. So we were correct in our assumption that they're Roman and, you know, gods of some description. We can quickly spot the most important gods, Venus and Mars. They are shown on a natural arch of rocks in front of a symbolic bed. So yes, oh, this is Mars and this is Venus and the symbolic bed behind them. In the background, the vegetation has many fruits in the right part, the male one, and only one in the left part, here and here, symbolizing the fecundation, fecundation. The posture of Venus derives from the ancient sculpture. They are accompanied by Anteros, the heavenly love, opposed to the carnal one. The latter is still holding the arch and has a blowpipe which aims at the genitals of Vulcan, <laughs> Venus's husband, portrayed in his workshop in a grotto. So this is that bit we were talking about. Behind him is the grape. Perhaps a symbol of the drunk's impertinence. <laughs> okay. The traditional interpretation of the work is based on a late 15th century poem by Battista Vieira. It is an allegory, Isabella d'Este, d'Este who ordered this painting for the famous Studiolo in the Ducal Palace of Mantua was it depicted as Venus and Francesco II Gonzaga, her husband, as Mars. In a clearing under the arch is Apollo playing a lyre. Down there. Nine muses are dancing. Yes. In an allegory of universal harmony. The touch of Pegasus's hoof right here can generate the spring which fed the falls of Mount Helicon, which can be seen in the background. Here. 
The muses danced traditionally in wood of this mount, and thus the traditional naming of Mount Parnassus is wrong. Near Pegasus is Mercury, with his traditional winged hat, Caduceus, I think, the winged staff with entwined snakes. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing any of these words wrong. And messenger shoes. He is present to protect the two adulterers. You may ask, how is it now in the Louvre's collection? Well, together with the other paintings in the studiolo, it was given to Cardinal Richelieu by Duke Charles I of Mantua in 1627, entering the royal collections with Louis XIV of France. Later, it became part of the Louvre Museum. P.S. Ancient gods' affairs were always very messy. Read here about the five most badass women of Greek mythology and their representations in art. That would be a wonderful video for another time. So, let's uh, make some notes on our good notes app and we were quite close with our interpretation of this painting albeit some of the uh, facts were a little bit wrong <laughs> so what color shall we use today let's have a nice black in this corner here so this painting is called Bar. Let's always check the spelling. Parnassus. Good. Parnassus. By Andrea. What's her last name? Mant Igna. Mant Igna. Mant and it was painted in 1497. 1497. Let's quickly check the medium. Tempera and oil on canvas. Away through. So we see the Roman gods gathered together. So gathering of Roman gods. We can quickly spot the most important gods, Venus and Mars. Which of these? Let's change this to white. So this is Venus. And this chap here is Mars. So they are shown on a natural arch of rocks in front of symbolic bed. So this is the symbolic bed. This is the natural arch. Um, 
vegetation has more fruits on the right part and only one on the left. That's left. And that's right. Hmm. Alright, so maybe maybe I'm mistaking that. So let's do a little bit thinner. So there we are. More fruit on this side. Venus derives from the ancient sculpture. They are accompanied by Anteros, the heavenly love, which is this cherub here. Anteros, this is oh, a bit too thick. This is Anteros, who was the heavenly. Blowpipe aims at the genitals of Vulcan, Venus's husband. So this is the blowpipe. Traditional interpretation is based on late 15th century poem by Battista Vieira. So, 15th century poem. So, so it's based of 15th century. Apollo is playing a lyre. So this is this is a 
Pegasus and Mercury. So this is Pegasus. This is Mercury. Pegasus and Mercury. So Pegasus is hoof can generate the spring which feeds the falls of Mount Helicon um, which can be seen in the background, let's do that Mount Helicon this is... I'm running out of room Mount Helicon and his hoof generates so who generates spring natural these are messenger Traditional winged hat. Traditional winged hat. And what else is there? So, get Usius. I think that's all of our notes. Look at this mess. <laughs> there is so much, so much going on. So let's do a recap of this painting. So this painting is called Parnassus by Andrea Mantigna. It was painted in 1497. It was tempera and oil, tempera and oil on camera. It depicts the gathering of Roman gods, and it was based on a 15th century poem by Battista Vieira. There's a lot going on, but the main focus is of Mars and Venus on a natural archway with a symbolic bed behind them. On this side of Mars, you see the fruits on the tree are much more plentiful than on this side where there's only one. Here you have Anteros, which is the heavenly love cherub, blowing his blowpipe, which is aimed at Vulcan, who is 
Venus's husband. It's aimed at his genitals. <laughs> this um, hanging uh, grapes in the background are a symbol of Venus's husband's drunkenness, I believe. My, I may have kind of interpreted that wrong. Down on the bottom left-hand corner, we see Apollo, who is playing the lyre. Here we have the muses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine muses. And they are dancing um, just gaily and free-spiritedly, and that represents universal harmony. So that depicts universal harmony. Here we have Mount Helicon in the background here. And on the bottom right-hand corner you see Pegasus, the winged horse, and Mercury. Uh, Mercury holds this uh, staff called Caduceus, Caduceus, which is a traditional wing staff with wings and these entwining snakes. He wears the traditional winged hat and the messenger boots. Pegasus is equally as blinged up and his hoof actually generates the natural springs which feeds into Mount Helicon up here. And there is so much going on, it would take a couple more days to truly appreciate all the little details like this thing in the background and, you know, all of the different fabrics which look so lovely. is Parnassus by Andrea Mantigna. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I would say that this is, um, I would say I like this uh, painting. I found quite a lot of joy um, critiquing it. There's a lot going on which I really, really like, um, and there's lots to keep your eye occupied and, you know, you can really go into detail on what's going on. That is a really nice look on uh, Roman gods and uh, their interactions with each other. So, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found it to be relaxing as well as informative. Please let me know what you think of the soft speaking as well. <laughs> I'd be interested to know your thoughts. So, thank you once again, and I look forward to seeing you soon.